quite eccentric. He'd also dug his own grave. Now this is my real home. 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 Long way down, eh? Yes, sir. Little home for me. And now this is a little home. Please, to love each other that is very good, you see. We better love each other. If we, are going, we love each other, we're going to see God. If we are not love each other, we're going to hell. I told you, I'm near to go myself. <laughs> and this one, to Jesus. Jesus. You see this one. Indeed, Mr. Ngoma was so near to God, he had a direct phone line to the Almighty, which he was happy to demonstrate to the bemused onlookers. Yeah. Eh? That we were hearing each other. After Mr. Ngomo had hung up on God, he took the group to see more of the careful preparations he had made for meeting his maker. Now, if I die, this is for tightening my coffee. Now, this is my coffee here. We lay like this side. And you can see down here, sometime, I'm f if I'm, I'm fat up sometime, mm -hmm. then they better leave this one, they better take mud, that mud is it. They better roll me in mud, then check me yeah. away in my little home there. <laughs> you see? Yeah, it's very small, yeah? yeah. yeah no, sometime I'm going to be thin, then yeah. I'm going, eh? I see. Yes, sir. If I'm full up, they better leave this uh -huh. and take mud, roll, roll me down. Okay. It had been these unexpected encounters which had enlivened the trip. travelers with open eyes and open minds, Africa is a continent full of surprises. And there were more to come. Scientists have spent many years watching the people of our planet. Trying to understand the fundamental things that make us tick. It was when the astronauts looked down on our planet that they saw the real answer. For there is one man-made achievement big enough to be visible from space something which illustrates what for hundreds of thousands of years has been the most basic instinct known to man. To protect. Norwich Union. No one protects more.
there's now a new and easy way to cross the channel. For your Le Shuttle brochure, call 0990 700 800 or see your travel agent. There is a tyre that combines grip and long life with a new outstanding feature. Up to a 5% saving on fuel in comparison with our standard tyres. Michelin Energy, driving down the cost of motoring. These days, more and more fine clothes say they're safe to machine wash at 40 and even up to 60 degrees. But over time, your main wash powder can cause colour fading and allow unsightly bobbling. But new Draft Ultra is safer, even up to 60 degrees, so your clothes stay looking good. New Draft Ultra. For colours, it's safer in the machine. With the end of the journey in sight, the group is beginning to break up. The good transport communications around East Africa mean that people can now leave the expedition if they want to. Caroline is off to Mombasa to be reunited with the boyfriend she met in Arusha. Adversity had forged close friendships within the group, and parting wasn't easy. As they watch Caroline depart, the now seasoned overlanders have learned to take every opportunity to add to their provisions. Excellent roads through Tanzania meant that progress was now swift. The route they're taking is popular with overlanders and it wasn't long before the group met up with another expedition. Wherever they went, everyone seemed to know Dave Barton, and stories of their Omo Valley adventure had already travelled ahead of them. But every expedition has its horror stories, and these newfound friends were no exception. Suddenly we just... A lot of gunfire, a lot of confusion. I thought maybe we'd walked into a war zone, but really didn't know. And there was three of us and two porters, three girls. The porter in front of me just ran, gone. He was off, out of there. Um, we just dived for the bushes. I dived down the side of this cliff, you know, into the heather. The girl behind me, she had a machete at her throat, so I could hear her just absolutely pleading for her life, saying, you know, um, God, just don't let this, this be me, don't let this happen. Heather was screaming. Um, we really didn't know what was happening. We think it was probably about six or seven guys. Um, and they were scared, that's what was really scary. They were just desperate people, probably, trying to feed their families, no money. And it all lasted, I guess, about 10 minutes, and they had very little English, but just demanding US dollars. And what was really frightening is, we're climbing the ruins Zores and we don't have US dollars. You don't carry US dollars when you're doing a mountain hike. So we just, they were just throwing their day packs at them, and I was lying there with my day pack, and it had been a hard climb, and I just thought, they're not getting my film, they're not getting my camera, so I was fosking around trying to put my camera in my pocket, and um, I got it in my pocket and just lying there, they were waiting for me, I think, to move, but eventually they just had to run off because I think they thought they'd killed me. There was so much gunfire going around, we were lying there just sort of waiting for the bullet, and it didn't happen, they just took off back to Zaire, we think they'd come over the mountains from Zaire, because you're pretty close to the border in the ruins Zores, and just took off the way they came. Hopeful that they weren't heading for quite that level of excitement, the group bade farewell to their fellow travellers and pressed on into Tanzania. Their route would take them through southern Tanzania towards the northern border of Malawi. 
It's in Malawi that Dave Barton has his base at a lakeside campsite in Kandy. A brief stopover in Mabea, close to the Malawi border. The site of a market was always an excuse for a binge and a chance for some to experience a few of the local delicacies. And these are fried finches. Not everyone's cup of tea, but apparently quite tasty, once you've figured out how to eat them. Over the border into Malawi, everyone is gripped by election fever. Crowds of happy voters were queuing along the roadside, waiting to take part in the country's first ever multi-party elections. This was where the group had been heading all these arduous weeks. Dave Barton's own version of paradise. The campsite on Lake Malawi is exactly what everyone had been dreaming of and longing for. For Dave himself, it was just good to be home. I've been looking after the place while I've been away. I've done tremendously. So we've now got an a la carte restaurant. And, yes, the place is going good. And the other night, there was actually eight, eight avalanche trucks in, which is the most we've ever had in one stretch. In one night. Yeah, that was great. See how popular the place is, it still is. For four days, the group relaxed and enjoyed themselves. They felt they had deserved it. This was surely a reward for all the dirt and discomfort they had endured over the previous weeks. Somehow it felt even better after all the hardship. It was wonderful to enjoy the gentler side of Africa, having experienced so much of her dark side. But even here, in paradise, you could hear the occasional horror story as other overlanders passed through the camp anxious to relate their adventures. There was three hippos there and um, they were grazing around this tent, or I think they, the hippos were apparently were fighting. Two were grazing tent. and one came up and started fighting. And uh, the Germans, either they were scared and they started to shake their tent or they were trying to get out of the tent or something, but that startled the hippos and they, um, Absolutely they charged the tent. the tent, ran through the tent, trod on the, the, the little boy, broke his arm and trod on the, the German guy's head and um, crushed his jaw. And then um, and as, he was, face to one uh, side. as he was coming out, he, um, the hippo grabbed him on the back of the leg, right, like in top the thigh, of the and thine. was shaking him all yeah. around. And the scurry was hitting the hippo on the head, and it still wouldn't let go. And wasn't until the truck of the lights came down that it actually frightened the hippo away. Mm. It was pretty, pretty horrific, really. The campsite was a happy refuge from such horrors. When the group wasn't relaxing, there were essential domestic chores to perform. Gavin had decided he needed a haircut. Dieter was in hand to try out his skills as a barber. Has he gone yet? Are we still... <laughs> I'm going to leave it, man. I already no. told you I'm going to leave it. No, you're not. No, you haven't seen it. What am I going to do with cool, it? Man. It doesn't look cool, I'm it sure. Yeah. Just trust us. Woody Woodpecker. I think you want it a lot shorter than this, actually. No, I do. Don't I? Oh, yeah. With a sort of like... Yeah. Um. Now, he's... Oh, he's Belgian, isn't he? Oh, no, he was a band. Dave had a bigger problem, a toe infected by a jigger worm. You need some, if you're using this, you need to use that as well, diluted. Joanne, the nurse, was trying to help. I know what I'm doing, I've done this a lot. No, you weren't, you were using it as, um... You wouldn't be not, I think it's what I'm going to do, it's all for All right. That's just what it's got in the hydrogen peroxide. It's... It's in, if it's an infection, isn't it? it's what's it, what's ever's um, 
infected bubbles, didn't he? But he, he put it on just his Fortunately, skin, yeah, the group had been relatively free from injury or sickness. A few people have had jiggers, but Dave's has been the worst. A lot of people have had um, tropical ulcers, and it just starts with a scratch, and they just so easily get infected and then take a long time to heal. I'll just put it in here then. Yeah. Well, okay. Do you want to check that in the, um, can you put that in the uh, place where the nice and cool? By comparison with the other overland vehicles in the campsite, their faithful Bedford truck was looking a little the worse for wear. So it was decided to do a bit of spring cleaning. The tranquility and comfort of Candy Beach, lapped by the waters of this huge inland sea, were irresistible. But this wasn't just any old tropical beach. They were in the heart of Africa and they'd fought their way here the hard way, through a landscape that was always surprising and challenging, even here. Walking across from the campsite to here, which is barely 300 yards, we've come across two types of monkey. I think they were vervet monkeys that we saw. There's an amazing number of baboons here that are very tame. In fact, they're probably too tame on the campsite because they have been known to, to come up on the trucks and uh, if you're not careful, you'll have things go missing. As somebody had a packet of biscuits go missing last night, apparently. And there's rocky hyrax here. There's uh, this enormous number of lizards with the most amazing colours. And we've also got deer. And I see there's crabs and all these fish in here that are some beautiful colours. Yeah, they've got quite big teeth and bite your fingers and your legs. Yeah, you got your white man the end of my finger. Ah! Eating out, eating out of your hands, I'm boxed in there now. Jesus! They're psycho fish! Yeah. <laughs> In the group's last night at the camp, it was party time. As other overland trucks came and went, there were new travellers to impress and new opportunities to tell old stories. They've come a long way together, physically and emotionally. As the Tongas sang their farewell to the group, everyone was alone with their own thoughts and memories. Within a few days, they would each go their own way once more changed forever by the experiences they had shared here in Africa. <laughs> On the road again for almost the last time, the truck was flagged down by a couple of witch doctors. Even at this late stage in the trip, it was felt to be a wise precaution to appease the spirits of the road. Apparently, the spirits are very fond of money and T-shirts. Duly blessed, the overlanders were now ready for one of Africa's most extraordinary sights. The first European to see these falls was Dr. Livingston 140 years ago. He named them after his queen. The Victoria Falls are the widest in the world and surely among the most spectacular. It was a fitting end to a spectacular three months. At times spectacularly beautiful, at other times spectacularly grim. Always challenging, enduringly memorable. 
So the best times I had were, I think, in the Omo Valley in Ethiopia, where we were digging our way out with a the truck. There for 10 days, it was, I was living on adrenaline. It was pure, sheer hard work all the time, but it was a, a fantastic buzz to do it. It was a great achievement to get out. And, you know, it's the thing that, it was one of the things I wanted to get out of Africa. One of the things I wanted to get on the expedition was for it to be a real expedition, for it to be an adventure. And it definitely turned out to be that way, it proved that way. And that really made, that really made the trip for me. Ethiopia was a bit uh, hard for me. Uh, but now I'm sitting here at the Zambezi, you know, with stories. I can't believe we got through it. I really can't. That was the hardest thing ever. But I guess if it taught me anything, it was uh, not all problems are insurmountable, you know. We were faced by things which I never thought we would get to. Road building and digging things out. The rainy season, missing it by an hour, probably. Uh, I never thought we would get out of there. When I read the brochure, it said, expect to dig yourself out of the truck. The truck out of trouble, sort of, on a fairly regular basis, and we thought, oh, you know, maybe once or twice a week. But, uh, as it turned out in the Emo Valley, it got a little bit more than that. We had 12 days of pretty hard gruel, but that's all part of it. That, that means you get more out of it. I think it's brilliant. It seemed quite good when we started off, but as times got harder, we got up into Ethiopia. Um, sort of discontent spread through the group on the back of the truck. I think what it was, the trip just wasn't for them. They had, obviously hadn't looked into properly what they wanted to get out of a trip like this and were prepared for what they found. I mean, maybe other overland companies aren't as harsh as trans -Fui. I mean, Dave sets himself up as quite a sort of adventurous, trailblazing sort of thing, which is what we did. Um, but they weren't prepared to rough it as much as other people were. The time has come. Time to say the goodbyes. Time to split up. Not an easy moment, even for Dave. I'd just like to say, guys, I hope you've all enjoyed the trip. Oh, yeah, oh, cheers, yeah. Dave. You just take care of yourself. Yeah, man. Yeah. Sure. Mike, can you put this in the boot? Okay. Simon? Kelly. And you can just pop in a bill. God bless It's just amazing how, it's at this point, you realise how close we have all gone. Uh, <laughs> happy and sad, next together. Yeah. Was there anything else to experience in Africa? For Lewis, the nuclear physicist, there was. He'd come in search of adventure, and since the Omo Valley hadn't beaten him, he was determined that neither would the Zambezi Gorge. Five, four, three, two, one, bungee! We come back up. Spinning around and like try and look up, and like looked up and saw the size of the gorge and a bit of this spray and stuff over there. And like managed to look up and like found the bridge and like bottom of the bridge and people waving. And you can't like move your hands about because you're like you know, flying about so fast. Brilliant. When you get to the top, you get to the top of the thing, you like hang for a moment while you're waiting for some like game to plunge back down again. It's great. In their own way, they'd all dived into the unknown and they'd all survived. They could all say they'd done Africa the hard way. Next Monday at 10, the Blue Revolution investigates why the Earth is an ocean predominant planet.
Tomorrow at 8.30, we experience the destruction wrought by earthquakes. At 9, wings of lightning, we focus on the deadly precision of jet fighters. Then the X-planes experiment with nuclear power. That's here on the Discovery Channel tomorrow from 8.30. So I'm in the car behind. So I can't go anywhere either. And the car park attendant is really offensive. He's no good to anyone. Anyway, the passenger, she's a member of the AA, and she gets out and rings them, even though she's not driving. I didn't know you could do that. Vaseline intensive care research have developed a two-in-one hand and nail lotion, which softens your hands and helps keep your nails this strong. If you were born between 1915 and 1945, you'll remember these street parties. There was plenty to celebrate then, and there's reason to celebrate now. You've reached the age when you are guaranteed to be accepted for low-cost life insurance from Sun Life. From just six pounds a month, equivalent to just 20 pence a day, you can secure a cash sum payable on death to help with funeral expenses, to leave to your partner or loved ones, or perhaps to benefit a favorite charity. And the best news of all is that you won't have to take a medical examination or answer any questions about your health to get this cover. That's right. Provided you're age between 50 and 80, you are guaranteed to be accepted for the Sun Life Over 50 plan, regardless of your state of health. For full details of how Sun Life can accept you for lifelong insurance cover, call this free phone number now. 0800 55 60 60. There's no obligation and no salesman will call. You will receive your information pack and a personal quotation by post. Apply now and you can get this attractive set of period pictures absolutely free to welcome you as a policyholder. You can also get your first month's cover free if you act promptly. Age certainly has its compensations when you can get guaranteed life insurance with the Over 50 plan. So look forward to lifelong peace of mind with Sun Life. Call this free phone number now. 0800 55 60 60. The lines are open, so call now. Doctor, Doctor, I'm obsessed with Joanna Lumley. It's the fishnets, you see. Ah, my boy, you need to see the new Avengers on Bravo every Monday at 9. Bravo. Bravo. How did she know that then? Paddy is a very clever lady. The New Avengers, every Monday, 9 p.m. on Bravo. Hey, you can see big things all over the country. Really big things. But there's only one place to see the big ticket. On CMT, country music television. CMT's big ticket is nothing but the biggest stars in country music in their biggest videos. Watch Big Ticket on CMT Europe every day at 6 p.m. March on Discovery sees the start of a new season of innovative documentaries from first-time producers. Outlaws profiles men and women who have contrasting lifestyles and work in challenging environments on the fringes of society. The story of the Lost Ark of the Covenant is one of the world's most enduring legends. In a new four-part series of History's Mysteries, dedicated experts investigate and attempt to answer questions surrounding this and other enigmas. On Saturday, March the 18th, Discovery goes underwater to reveal some secrets of the deep, from the modern military use of the seas to the unexplained phenomena of the Bermuda Triangle. Nature, science and history all have a home here. Past meets present in Dinosaurs Dead or Alive, a week-long series of programmes that compares modern-day animals with possible prehistoric ancestors. Just some of the highlights for March on Discovery. For 50 years, NATO and the Warsaw Pact invested heavily in military resources. Now they're faced with a new threat, industrial pollution. We're seeing uh, environmental degradation uh, take many forms and affect uh, not only the security of people, but even the habitability of certain parts of the planet. If we cannot protect 
our environmental support systems on which life depends, then there is no future for us. If our security is our environment, why are we spending money defending against the wrong enemy? Sir Anthony Hopkins narrates Top Guns and Toxic Whales in Discovery Journal, Tuesday the